Yeah, Pahu, we eat. Very good indeed. Parley, $500. Four times, hit four blackjacks. Well, it's just about time for an early breakfast. Let's go down to Mother Sweets and have some good coffee. Help the blind. Help the blind. Hello, Yancey. Blind Bill, you old faker. I haven't seen you in a dog's age. Say, this must be the Indian I've been hearing about. First time I've seen him. Pahu Katiwa, Blind Bill. Nice to meet you. Where are you headed? I'm heading for the French market to steal some breakfast. We're going down there a little bit later. We'll see you. Right, Yancey. Help the blind. Help the blind. One of the greatest larceny artists in town. Help the blind. Fresh vegetables, onions. Fresh vegetables, onions. How about a nice wash them, fellow? Thank you, Sam. Good morning, Miss Carey. Good morning, Good morning ladies. I hope you all consider the plan I outlined. This market has been in business before you were alive and with no need of protection. Our answer is no. <laughs> Boys, it's all yours. He's badly hurt. They stabbed him. Blind Bill, get a doctor. Bring him to Madame Francine's and hurry. Place, Francie. Blind Bill's gone for the doctor. It's all right, Yancey. What happened? I don't know myself yet. Who are you? Is he going to be all right? I said, who are you? Celeste Smith. Is Sam going to be all right? Smith. It was touch and go. There's nothing we can do. Hello, doctor. Right over there. Are you with the police? Oh, he spends a lot of time with the police, but not through choice. Oh, he's not a criminal. He just has a very bad habit of not minding his own business, and it gets him into trouble. My name is Yancey Derringer, and this is Madame Francine. Despite the character reference, I would like to ask you a few questions. The police will. No. Oh, I can't see the police. You may not have any choice, Miss Smith. Call him Sam. Who was he? I can't tell you. Did you know him, Bill? Oh, yes, yes. He came to the market every morning with her. Used to carry her flowers in for her. She sells camellias. Beautiful pink camellias. I saw her arrive a couple of times in the carriage. She left it there at Decatur Street and walked to the market. I thought you were blind. Blind, Bill? He can see better than most Pinkerton agents. Why, thank you, Yancey. Thank you, Doctor. Bill, you were there early this morning, weren't you? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, you see, this fella came down and looked over the market last week. He wants 50% of everybody's take. If we pay, he guarantees nobody's going to steal anything from us. That's very funny right there. Well, so we turned him down. And this morning, just as he promised, he took us apart. Well, there was mayhem. Now it's murder. Now it's a case for the police. Police? I better get out of here. But somebody's got to testify. Let her. Who is she? They call her Miss Celeste, that's all I know. Say, maybe Carrie Mead knows something about her. Which one is she? She's the old battle axe. Yancey, I'd like to help you out, but being largely illegal myself, I don't have a very good social relationship with the police, so if you don't mind. 
Thanks for your help, Bill. You lost him. Well, Miss Smith, you're going to have to tell the truth sooner or later, so it might as well be now. It was very dark. I saw nothing. I've got to go. Where is your home? I can't tell you. I've got to go. It's dawn. Francie, she'll stay here with you. I'll send for the police. She'll stay. Upstairs. We'll wait there. Mr. Administrator? Captain Fry and two Secret Service men went over to Madame Francine's. They found the servant's body as you said they would, but no witness. Your Celeste Smith got away. Well, Francie wasn't hurt. No, she's all right. Just angry. But there's something you neglected to tell me. Such as? You killed a thug in the marketplace this morning? And just what would you have done? He's shooting at me and the other people. I don't doubt that. Witnesses? I can find you 20 of them. Well, you'll have to produce at least one of them. Because I already said you had one. Otherwise, you'd be under arrest. That's all I can do for you. I can't tell the police you work secretly for me. So you're on your own, Mr. Derringer. Thank you. And now what about the murder in the market? Yancey, this isn't stealing from the rich and the strong. It's stealing from the poor, the needy, the weak. It's a new kind of crime and a new kind of criminal, and I won't tolerate it in New Orleans. Unfortunately, at this time, there's no evidence. One man stabbed to death, the little merchant's terrorized. What kind of evidence do you need? Someone has to step forward with two simple words. I accuse. All right, I'll find you someone. My way. The law doesn't tie your hands as it does mine. And it doesn't help the little people who were beat up today on the market, either. Good day, Mr. Cole. Mr. Derringer, stay angry. Hey, shot, Cruz. Let me toss. You know, I, I can't understand Sam not being there this morning. Don't worry about him, Grandfather. I'm sure he's all right. What are you staring at? Young man. Come here, please. Yes, sir. Is your name Derringer? That's correct, sir. I thought so. I'm Colonel Duval. Yes, of course. It's been so many years, sir. You are the image of your father, boy, and it's very good to see you. Sit down. Thank you. Mm, this does bring back memories. I can see you and your father riding over the hill like fire and brimstone to spend an hour at the plantation. Of course, you were much younger then, of course. Oh, forgive me, you met my granddaughter, Celeste. Well, I have a feeling we've met, although when and where I can't remember. Mr. Vaughn? Mr. Derringer? Well, I'm drinking Chartreuse, Yancy. Would you join me? Be my pleasure, sir. Uh, Gaza. One more. Yes, yeah, yellow, not green. You know, they say that all Chartreuse would be yellow if it could be. And all camellias pink. Hmm. Celeste would agree on that. You must discuss it with her. I'd be very happy to. Uh, she grows them, you know. Oh, really? Oh, yes, in, in great profusion. And like you, Yancey, she prefers the pink to the white. <laughs> Don't you, my dear? Yes, Grandfather. Your garden would be very beautiful. With your permission, sir, I'd love to call sometime. Oh, you. any time, boy. We're, we're still at Round Hill. Do I have your permission? You have grandfather's. Good day. Bye, Yancey. Help 
Out the blind. Saints keep you, madam. Out the blind. Out the blind. Out the blind. Nancy. I just saw the fellow who stabbed Sam. He went at eight thirteen and a half. Thank you, Bill. Watch yourself. Help the blind. Come in. hurt you badly, Mr. Derringer? Not badly. Nature blessed me with a thick skull. Otherwise, I, I've never walked into a trap like this. You couldn't know. Don't blame yourself. I'll get you a glass of sherry. Rub your wrists. You've been tied up for over an hour. Thank you, Miss Carey. You're most kind. How did you know my name? Blind Bill. We'll talk. They left your pistol here. I wonder why they didn't kill me. I really don't know. Perhaps because I was here, perhaps because it was daylight, and it would be difficult to dump you in the Mississippi. But I know this. They'll kill you on sight if you interfere again. Miss Carey, when I knocked on your door, I heard a woman's voice. Was that you? Were they forcing you? Well, no, I wasn't here then. When I came home... Please sit down. Thank you. You were all tied up, and they were waiting here. Mr. Jordan and his friends. The woman's voice that I heard, it sounded to me... Well, it sounded to me like Mr. Val. Oh, it couldn't be. Not a sweet girl like that. Well, she couldn't be behind this terrible thing. In the South since the war, families that were rich, well... Well, now they're poor. Like myself? Your home doesn't seem impoverished. All this is from the plantation. When the Major died, we lost the place. Where was it? Gainesville. Oh, it was a beautiful spot. Green Mount. I kept these things. Your husband was Major Zachary Meade? You knew him? No, of him. But still, Mr. Derringer, we're proud people, all of us. We toil in secret. We don't wish others to know how we make ends meet. But it's no secret that man survives by the sweat of his brow. Some of us are new to it. Like myself, like Miss Celeste. Don't you realize that secrecy is the weapon that the blackmailers will make the most use of? And no matter what Jordan and his men do, there'll be no witnesses. You yourself can't go to the police would make your plight public. True. And for the rest, a, well, a threat of death will do. It will. So you have to pay. Half of what we earn. A body doesn't have to die at the market. They could murder me anywhere. That's true. No, Mr. Derringer. I'm going to pay and live. Thank you for the sherry. I'll see you again. Mr. Derringer, please don't interfere. Mr. Jordan has many helpers. It's, it's an organized ring. It might be a newspaper boy who shot you or a barber who cut your throat. It's not worth it. It is worth it, Miss Carey. Good day. <laughs> Carrie, you should have been an actress. You almost brought tears to my eyes. <laughs> oh, excuse me. 
I wasn't good enough. He won't quit. He's a dangerous man. Why didn't we take care of him here? Because I don't believe in deliberate murder. But I've changed my mind. Kill him. A pleasure. The blind man, too. Oh? He sees too much. That's how Derringer followed you here, you fool. Help the blind. Yancey. You were in there a long time. I was beginning to worry about you. Yeah, it's too long. Who went in after me? Not a soul. Sure? Positive. Sure Miss Carey didn't arrive while I was inside? I know what I saw. I tell you nobody. You better get off the street. You'll never be in trouble. Me? Why? Sooner or later, Jordan's got to figure out how I knew he was in there. You may be right. He checked me pretty close. Help the blind. Help the blind. Emerald, get it, will you? And tell the eager loser we don't turn a wheel till 5 p.m. Hello, Emma. The valves get home all right? Good. Hello, Yancey. Francie. Good night last night? Till you arrive. Oh, well, I'd like some information. You might apologize for turning this place into a mortuary. I was up till 8 o'clock this morning with the police. Sorry. What do you want to know? You remember uh, Major Zachary Mead? Of course, from Gainesville. He was a member of this club. He was killed at Cole Harbor during the war. Well, Francie, isn't he the one that was always bragging about being a bachelor? Like yourself. He's the most confirmed bachelor in the world. He used to say it was hard enough to live with himself without adding a nagging hag. That's what I thought. Wait a minute. What's going on? Well, I just left the Major's widow. Widow? <laughs> She's kidding. Yes, she is. Help the blind. I didn't expect you to accept my grandfather's invitation so quickly. I came here to tell him about Sam. Well, you mustn't. Mr. Val, during the war, there was a man in my company who spoke only of the past, never the future, of things that were gone, would never come back. Why are you telling me this? Because some people choose to live in a past that doesn't exist. Yes, my grandfather lives in the past. I'm not just his granddaughter. I'm a lady. He protects me. I don't protect him. The truth might open your eyes. The truth that we're desperately poor. He thinks we live on the sugar crop he's planted. Twice a year we go to dinner and the opera, just to prove that nothing's changed, that the old New Orleans still flourishes. The truth would break his heart. You have beautiful eyes, Celeste. It's hardly the time to say so. Well, since we're speaking the truth, can you think of a better time? Yancey, welcome to Round Hill. Thank you, Colonel. Seeing you twice in one day after all these years is mighty pleasant. I'm afraid I'm bringing you some bad news, sir. Bad news? Yes, sir. Your servant Sam is dead. He was beaten and stabbed to death this morning at the French market. Sam? Dead? Oh, no. I knew something was wrong. Poor Sam. Poor Sam. You have something more to tell me? Yes, sir. A lot more. And I'll need your help. Well, sit down, Yancey. Come in. Mr. Administrator, Mr. Duval, Colonel Duval, John Colton. Mr. Duval, Colonel Duval. My pleasure, sir. Won't you be seated? No, there's no time to waste. These criminals terrorizing the French market must be stopped. I know, sir. We're doing our now, best. Now, I'm not complaining, sir. I'm just helping. You need a witness. You have one now. You, Colonel? My granddaughter, sir. I can. I will identify Francis Jordan as the man who threatened us as the man who destroyed our produce. 
And as the man who killed Sam. I told you I'd bring you a witness, Mr. Cole. You're very brave, Miss Duvel. This office appreciates your courage and that of your grandfather. But your testimony may not be necessary. Well, what do you mean by that? I've already issued a warrant for Francis Jordan. He stabbed a beggar named Blind Bill. But I told Bill to take cover. Fortunately, Blind Bill survived long enough to identify Mr. Jordan. Did you find Mr. Jordan? No. My agents are searching for him now. Well, pull him off. Don't let him touch him. He's only a hired hand. Let him go ahead with their plan. And Celeste, I'd like for you to be at the market again in the morning. Dawn, as usual. All right, Yancy. Thank you. Yancy. Francis Jordan is a dangerous man. That makes two of us, Mr. Cope. Everybody. There's nothing else we can do. If we don't pay them, they'll destroy us. Even if soldiers were guarding us, the ring would get to us, away from here, to beat us and threaten us and ruin us. Sam was the first. They killed him, then Blind Bill. So I'm going to pay. They came to me and asked me to collect. We put half of what we make in this bag. Pass it among you. It's hard, but we have no choice. We do have a choice. The answer is no. Don't say it. We've got to give them money now. They may be watching us. Let them watch. The answer is still no, not a cent. They want it the hard way, boys. Let's go. somewhere, young lady? Oh, please help me, sir. Get me away from this terrible place. With pleasure, madam. I'm sure you'll find the caliph was very peaceful and quiet after all this excitement. You're under arrest, Miss Carey. You all right? Yes. You know I was right about you. I didn't do anything. It was you who showed us how false pride can be. Pride? I was talking about your eyes. I said they were beautiful. They are. You choose the oddest moments to say the nicest things. Shall we talk about it over a cup of coffee? No, oh, I can't. I have to sell my camellias. I work for a living in the French market, remember? When am I going to see you again? Here, at dawn, any morning. Dawn? I was talking about dinner tonight. Sazerac? Mm, I can't. I have to get up early. You know, you're making it rather difficult. And I thought I was making it so easy. <sighs> what a waste. care for opera, what does he do for entertainment in New Orleans? Well, if I were you, I... Thank you. Dimitri, give me the vodka. Thank 
Heavens, they did not shoot the vodka. It's very difficult to find outside of Russia. Dimitri, get to my cat. Just the same way. One of them got away. I'm surprised. You are a very good shot. Thank you. you. Mind telling me what this is all about? Those men, the sailors, they are from our ship, the Borodino. We just landed. Uh, we're riding into town to find a little excitement. Well, it seems to me that you've had just about all the excitement you can handle, Sonny. Sonny, do you realize you are addressing to his Imperial Highness the Grand Duke Alexis, heir apparent to the throne of all the Russias? Over up, be quiet. George. I like you. Gentlemen, I implore you. Shut up, Suvorov! Da. This is Colonel Petro Suvorov. He's my bodyguard. How do you do? My name is Yancy Darren. And who's this? This is my Pawnee friend, Pavel Katiwa, a wolf who stands in water, mighty chief of the Scary Dairy Pawnee Nation. He's a Russian. He's an American Indian. To you, an Indian. To me, a Russian immigrant. You know how they all migrated from beautiful Siberia to this place of desolation? Gentlemen, I implore you, we must get his highness of the streets to a place of safety. Well, now, your highness, that sounds like a good idea. George, for you, I do it. Suvorov, take the vodka. Hold it. You're all under arrest. After you, your highness. Magnificent prison is this. The doors are left open. The Cossack drinks with the condemned man. Well, you see, Yancey gave me his word this time. He's not going to try to escape, so there's no need to have the door locked. You understand? <laughs> of course. I thought the Mardi Gras was over, Yancey. Who is this character? Well, this character is His Highness, the Grand Duke Alexis of Russia. Your Highness, may I present friend jailer, keeper of the keys, master of the damp walls, crown prince of the calaboose. An honor, Your Highness. An honor. Nastarovia. Certainly. Nastarovia. Mud. Turnkey. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Captain Fry. I was just checking the prisoner's cell, looking for weapons. Never mind that. Mr. Derringer, may I see you a moment? There's been a terrible mistake. Could you step in the office, please? Certainly. Stay with these men. Don't go away without me. Your Highness. Sit down. You know anything about playing poker? Poker? No. Move in a little closer. I'll show you, Your Highness. Yancy. Well, good evening, Mr. Administrator. It's been a ghastly mistake. I didn't make it. Do you realize that your cellmate is none other than His Imperial Highness, the Grand Duke of Russia? No, I realize it, Mr. Colton. I was just wondering when the administrator would. Well, I said it was a mistake. Why don't you do something about it? Well, it's not that simple. He's making a world cruise on the Borodino. A Russian man of war. It's anchored right out there in the Mississippi. I know. He told me. And he won't let us provide him with a bodyguard. I had Captain Fry assign his best secret service men. They were refused. He was really stubborn about it. He wanted to stay incognito. He wanted to paint the French Quarter red. Now, that sounds like a marvelous idea. As a matter of fact, I think I'll join him. That's just what we want you to do, Mr. Derringer. Not exactly, Captain. Yancey, that young man is in grave danger. Washington received word that the revolutionaries attempted to assassinate Tsar Alexander in St. Petersburg. Oh? And that an attempt would probably be made on the Grand Duke's life, too. And has? Yes. And if anything happens to that young man in New Orleans, on American soil, it would be an international calamity. I made a suggestion. Yes, Captain Fry suggested that you and Pahu might help us out by keeping an eye on him. The only way I can think of to assure the young man's safety is uh, putting him in a prison. Prison? I don't think Mr. Derringer means the calaboose. I thought we'd take over Madame Francine's for an evening. What? With your money. An excellent idea. Clear out everyone but the Grand Duke's own party. Mm, how much will it cost? Say about 3,000. <sighs> Ridiculous. 
Good night, Mr. Colton. Yeah, Chief. Very well. But the Grand Duke must be kept in complete ignorance of our protection. You understand? I'll try, Mr. Colton. And I shall want hourly reports from you. Yes, sir. I, um, how you say it, call? That's right, Your Highness. Sorry. Three jacks. <laughs> Three bullets. You play just like Yancey. Gentlemen, we're as free as birds. Now, how about a trip to the opera, Your Highness? What opera? Are you sick? Well, maybe something more appealing to your imperial taste. A poker parlor? Da, конечно. Vinny champagne. Da, da. And beautiful women. Ah, oh, Yancey. Already I owe you my life, and now you put me under a greater obligation. Bahu, you bring these gentlemen to Madame Francine. Now go ahead and make the arrangement. One thing, Yancey. I must be strictly incognito. Always when they are knowing I am the Grand Duke, there is too much bowing and scraping. I wish to be introduced as a plain, common, everyday man. I shall be a simple count. Alexis, I'll make you the simplest count that ever came down the pike. Sure, thank you. He's free, too. Don't forget me over here, Your Highness. Shove it up, shut up. Shove it up. Pay everything. Yes, Your Highness. Your Highness. Your Highness. General, you'd better hide this. That one, too. Yancy? Pearl Girl, where's Madame Francine? Gone up river to St. Louis. She won't be back for a week. Yancy, are the police shutting us down? No, I'm taking over the club for the evening. General, you'd better hide the best glasses also. Yancy, I'm sorry. Please come back tomorrow night. Remember, Jeremiah, no one is allowed in the club tonight. Yancy. Yancy, this goes beyond the call of friendship. If Madame Francine ever finds Stop touch... worrying, Goldie. But this was a big spending crowd. They were spending money like they printed it. In fact, one did. I went over $300 in Chuckalock in two hours. Now just simmer down, girls, because you're all overruled. The administrator of New Orleans is going to pay Madame Francine $3,000 for the use of the hall. And we've all been drafted. Now, no one gets in except Count Alexis and his party. Oh, and Captain Fry. Now, you understand what you're supposed to do. Will we keep this Count Alexis here? At all costs. At all costs. No, he's charming. You'll like him. Now, if he wants to play chuckalock, He wins. And if he wants vintage champagne? He drinks. If he wants pleasant company? I lose. There are no strangers in the place? None. Aren't you new? Oh, Amethyst, this is Mr. Yancey Derringer. How do you do, Mr. Derringer? It's my pleasure. Sorry, Jeremiah. Mr. Derringer? They're coming. It's the sound of the bugle, girls. Let's go. Maybe you better line up along the bar. Thank you. What a beautiful place. Yancey! Ochin Harasho. Alex. Short. Already I am liking this place. Do not waste time. Introduce me to these beautiful treasures. Is this place safe, Mr. Derringer? Such girls are going to be safe, Sovra. Your life is my own. Shut up, Sovra. Da. Nancy, introduce me. Count Alexis, may I present Miss Opal? Utterly charmed. Miss Emerald? Captivated. Miss Pearl Girl. Pearl Girl. Beautiful. Miss Goldie, your hostess pro tem. Ravish. Miss Amethyst. You're in pity, your highness. You know who I am? Yes, Your Highness. How do you know? I have seen you many times, Your Highness, in St. Petersburg at the cathedral. A country woman. Da. Shut up. Da. Russian girl. And so far from home. What is your name, Russian girl? Ekaterina Febronio, Your Highness. Such a beautiful name. May I call you Katya? Thank you, Your Highness. Good, you will call me Alex. Zora, Watska. Everybody, champagne for everybody. Except for me and my Russian girl. Razovka for us. Razovka? That's vodka and black pepper. 
Katarina, you remember. Black Pepper! Pajo, you stay here. Stay with the Duke like glue. I don't think you'll have any trouble keeping him here for a while. No, I hope not. Will you hold the fort. I want to see if I can find the Russian, the one that got away. You're not staying? No. If I don't find that revolutionary, his life won't be worth a plug nickel. Keep your eye on the Russian girl. Nobody seems to know anything about her. the O'Hara. O'Hara? The O'Hara. What have you done with me clothes? Never seen you or your clothes before. What are you doing in that uniform? You're not the one who came sneaking up behind me and dealt me a vicious, cowardly blow that knocked me colder than a mackerel. No, I'm not. You mind telling me who you are and what happened to you? I'm a riverboat pilot and the best one on the river from the day I was born. Yes, but what happened to you? Well, I was on my way down to the bucket of blood, you know, for a quiet evening with Foxy McClure. A couple of drinks, a couple of rounds of fisticuffs. Nothing like a good fight to whet a man's appetite. When I was treacherously assaulted. Well, did you see who assaulted you? Lacking vision in the back of my head, you idiot. No. But when I came to, there I was, stretched on the ground, shivering with the cold, stripped. Aye, stripped to the buff. And these heathen garments lying there beside me. Decency is the only reason I'm wearing them. Well, you better get out of that uniform. You'll find yourself working for the Tsar. Aren't you ashamed? Uh, that's not the point. The point is, counterfeit money is being passed in this town. Uh, unintentionally by me. This was given to me not half an hour ago. Here, look at it. J j just look at it. That, I, I didn't see what it was until I gave it to Foxy inside there for a drink. It's an outlandish piece of queer. I wonder he was annoyed with me. You just picked the pockets of one of our Russian visitors. Yeah, see, I wouldn't do a thing like that. This was one of our own, a riverboat pilot. You sure? Of course, I'm sure. He had a pilot's cap on. Well, what'd he look like? Well, I, I didn't see his face. But he had wool line pockets. That'll help a lot. Thank you. Thanks, Nancy. Where was this? Uh, over on Bourbon Street. Not, not a half an hour ago. In front of Madame Francine's club. Well, I'll just keep this if you don't mind. Oh. Keep it. You're welcome to the worthless stuff. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. You can take it to any bank. Russian money. They give you about a thousand dollars. Good night, Judy. Hello, Mr. Derringer. I'm glad you're here. How's the party going? Did you find anything? Yes, the man we want's in the neighborhood. I'll keep looking for him. He's dressed like a riverboat pilot. He slugged one, changed clothes with him. Do you want me to help you? No, I think it's more important that you stay Nancy. here. Nancy! Nancy, you've got to stop that bad lunatic before he takes the whole place apart. All right, come on. Sora! Yes, Your Highness. Again? If you wish, Your Highness. Since you ask. Uh, allow me, Your Highness. Sure! You are just in time. Having fun? Let me show you. Stand still. Oh, no, huh? no, not again. Sumerov! Da. Are you ready? Yes, Your Highness. Excellent shot, Your Highness. I know. Alex, why don't you give me that? Sure, sure. It's 4,000 rubles, Sumerov. Yes, Your Highness. I will now demonstrate Russian justice. Excuse me, Your Highness. Now there. There is a nihilist. And there are two nihilists, only dead. 
Now this, this is a very dangerous revolutionary. He has been tried and found guilty. The sentence is yet to be carried out. The execution will not take place. Alex. I file an appeal on that one. You have to put off the execution. You have been appealed. Don't worry, Mr. Derringer. I can handle him. Up to you, Colonel. To please. You're a good shot. Thank you, Yancey. Your Imperial Highness will recall that he has won 4,000 rubles from me this evening. Uh, naturally, I recall it. Surely you will give me a chance to get even, Your Highness. Suvorov, you will never get even. But noblesse oblige, Your Highness. Yes, they do, don't they? All right. Alex, do me a favor. Do your shooting in the back room. You're alarming the young lady. Charge for you, I do it. Suvorov, come yes, on. Your Highness. Appeal denied. Justice is done. Katerina! Come along, darling. I need you to keep Colonel Suvorov honest. Suvorov, bring the vodka. Yes, Your Highness. Yancy. Stop worrying, Goldie. The Grand Duke is safe as long as he's with Colonel Suvorov. Yeah, but who's safe with the Grand Duke? Well, that's your problem. Thanks. I'll see you later. Wait a minute. Where are you going? Oh, I'll be back. If you wish, Your Highness. Uh, of course I wish. All this. You have a nice flat head, Suvi. That will make it 5,000 rubles. That is if you win, Your Highness. <laughs> the Romanovs never lose. <laughs> My beautiful Katarina, hold this. Don't play this game. Do not worry, darling. Suvarov! Suvarov, sometimes I wish I could miss. No, Your Highness. Shut up! Da. Excellent, Your Highness. Shut up. Da. That makes it 5,000 rubles, Suvorov. Da. You want to try it? If it pleases, Your Highness. If it pleases. No, please stop. This is horrible. There is no danger to His Highness, Catherine. I use empty cartridges. His Highness always likes to win. But why do you play the fool? A man sometimes must play the fool if he has a purpose. Suvorov. Da, Your Highness. Are you ready? Yes, Your Highness. Wait. Yes, Your Highness. Katya, my vodka. Thank you, Katya. Where's the Grand Duke? Still in the back room with Zuvarov. What's up? Alexis! Alexis, open up! Sure. <laughs> Tell him I'm busy. Please, His Highness does not wish to be disturbed. <laughs> I'm ready. This time I will not miss. Suvorov, you know you are a bad shot. I'm an excellent shot, Your Highness. I'm not aiming at the glass. I'm aiming at you. I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. I'm going to kill you. Done with the Romanovs! 
Just grazed her shoulder. Good. Yancey, we owe you a lot. This country owes you a lot. Oh, you mean I don't have to go to jail? Well, I'll make an exception this time. What happened to Suvorov? He's in the brig and the Russian man of war. That is, he was. They have their own peculiar sense of justice. Thank you. Try to forgive me for what I did to you. Forgive your highness? I offer thanks that I could help. Believe me, I wish I could have taken that bullet. Oh, no. You mustn't worry. It, it isn't serious. I hope it doesn't leave a scar. If it does, I, I shall be very proud. I shall wear it like a decoration. Katharina, I... I must say goodbye to you now. I know. Das Batani. Goodbye, Your Highness. A calm sea and happy voyage, and a long life in Russia. Captain Fryan, sorry to keep you waiting. I was saying goodbye to Katya. Well, Jordan. Thank you. Alex, what does Jort mean? Well, uh, little devil. That's for Danya, Yancy. Alex. That's for Danya, Jort. Your Highness. Das Vidania! Das Vidania. What does that mean? Do we meet again? Oh, no. Not again. Never again. Come on, get that thing fixed or we'll all be eating Mississippi mud. All right, fine. That'll hold till we get down to Cass's Crossing. Let's go. Hold it right there. Rogue Donovan. You ain't going anywhere. I'll take the wagon. Donovan, you can't have this wagon. What's in it? It looks like a Gatling gun to me. I'll take that, too. I don't care what... You two boys. If you see Yancey Darrens, you're telling him to come looking for me. Now get! <laughs>
Touch and go, Mr. Colton. We have two crevices break above the city. What? How many? We have two crevices break above the city. I don't know how long this will hold. You can see for yourself, we're just making it. Colonel Whitehead is pouring soldiers in above the line. If the river rises, though... The river is rising, Captain. I just received word from Port Hudson. A crest of 59 feet just hit them, and they're evacuating Natchez under the hill. 59 feet? We'll never hold here. We've got to hold. What did you say the size of that crest was? 59 feet. And we've got 10 hours before it reaches New Orleans. That'll be around 9 o'clock tonight. Levy will never hold it. Then what can I do? Evacuate. You said you had 10 hours. Captain Fry, you will report to General Cochran immediately. Tell him. Tell him I am ordering the evacuation of New Orleans at once. Yes, sir. Mr. Colton, I have a message. Lieutenant Carson and his detail taking a Gatling gun to Cass's Crossing were ambushed. Carson was murdered. The gun is gone. The killer is Rogue Donna. Rogue Donna. That will have to wait. But, sir, evacuate? That's an order, Captain. Yes, sir. Anything I can do, Mr. Colton? You have your own problem, Yancey. You heard the captain. Rogue Donovan escaped. You sent him to prison. He's undoubtedly looking for you to kill you. Mississippi may not give him a chance. Isn't she at the levee? No, I murdered Cassis Crossing just below Waverly. There's a cove there. It's quiet. She misses the rush of the river. It's safe. She floats. Is it really bad, Yancey? The worst ever. Marsh Yancey. Yes, Obda. The flood of 60. You remember that one? Yeah. But didn't they blow the levee at Bonnet Calais to take the waters away from New Orleans? That's right. Well, thank you, Obda. It's worth a chance, isn't it? Better than no odds at all. Don't linger too long, Yancey. It's bad enough knowing you without having to remember you. Take good care of the ladies, Obadiah. Yes, sir. Thanks for the thought. In 1860, we had just about our worst flood. That is up till now. At that time, we dynamited the levee right here. That's Bonnet Carré. There's a shallow channel that runs from Bonnet Carré right to Lake Pontchartrain. Right in there, there used to be a town called Waterproof. When the water hit, it took a clear to the lake. Now, if we dynamite the levee at Bonnet Carré, the water will go straight through to the lake and take the pressure off of New Orleans here. The water will go to the lake and pass the city down to the east of us. Yes, yes, I understand. But you're wrong about the town of Waterproof. It's not a ghost. Well, it has to be. It's been flooded five times. I know. But when the war broke, this land was bought up by a lady, Charity Grayson. She has an immense sugar plantation planted right through there. Well, how can that be? The Union soldiers pillaged the whole countryside right after New Orleans fell. She's British, Yancey. Oh. Her property was above the spoils of war. Well, we're wasting time, Mr. Cope. That crest is getting closer and closer. Can you ride a horse? Mr. Derringer, I rode a horse all the way from Bull Run to Appomattox. Yes, I know. We chased you part of the way. Captain Fry, you better come with us. Well, there it is at the beginning of the Bonacare. Now, if we dynamite the levee just it above will there, it Lady Charity's entire plantation, probably her house as well. Mr. Colton, if I had to make a choice between Waverly, my plantation, and New Orleans, I'm afraid that... Well, I'm afraid that Waverly just have to lose. I know. But Lady Charity may not agree. You just have to see about that. That's as far as anyone will come today, gentlemen. Lady Charity? Who are you? 
Can't see down. The name is not without a certain dubious claim to fame. Yours is new to me. May I introduce Mr. Colt, Administrator of New Orleans, and Captain Fry, head of his Secret Service. You are all on my land. Get off. Lady Charity, it's very urgent that we speak with you. Mr. Colton, there is no point in talking. You've come to dynamite this part of the levee. I give you my word, Lady Charity. You'll be handsomely reimbursed by the government. I give you my word, Mr. Colton. You take one more step on that levee, and you'll be shot. I will not be intimidated by threats. Did they kill him? No, they shot him in the leg. I'm going to town and get some soap, cannon, and dynamite. Where will you be? I'll try to get him out of the house. What if you don't get clear? Blow the levee. What? Blow the levee. You know that. Get out of my house. Stop it! Don't you try playing hero, Mr. Administrator. You know me. Yeah, I know you. I was down below by the levee and I heard it all. Listen, lady. You ought to be mighty thankful that I'm here. I'll be thankful when you're dead. I figure I'm holding up here at your place. I got the administrator there as a hostage. Puts me in pretty good condition. Only one problem. Let their levy out there. If they blow it up, then we all drown. There'll be blue bellies on the way here. So I know a couple of rifles won't stop them. But this Gatling gun will. Is that what you want? your boy there back to the levee. They'll need his gun. Donovan, I apologize for being so inhospitable. Donovan, isn't there a shred of human decency left in you? No, Mr. Administrator. No, I don't think so. Experts took it all out of me. Listen to me. If you keep my men from blowing up that levee, you will be directly responsible for the lives of countless women and children. Mr. Administrator, if I were you, I wouldn't worry about their deaths. I'd worry about yours. Waverly and bring us back two horses while I change clothes. We're going to teach the meaning of the word charity to a woman named Charity. Pleasure, Mr. Administrator. There's one thing I can say for you. You got a lot of sand. You know, I've had bullets taken out of me in my time, and I know it ain't no picnic. Thirty-one caliber. Makes quite a haul. Yeah, souvenir for you. If she had hit you anywhere upstairs, I don't think I'd have had me a hostage. 
I didn't shoot to kill. Meaning you know how? I know how. You know, there's no need to glue yourself to that gun. We command the whole area anyhow. There ain't nobody gonna get to us across that ground except maybe an Indian. What are you doing? Yancey Derringer and his Indian near the horses. Yancey Derringer? <laughs> They get around behind us now, they've outflanked us. You've got to kill them. That means you the bloodthirsty one. If they get this gun, we're finished. Everything will go. You've got to stop Derringer. That's why I'm here, lady. That's why I'm here. Now, look, you do what you're told. Hang on to the gun and watch the levee. I'll backtrack Derringer and the Indian. Here, take this pistol. Keep your eye on the administrator. Try any tricks and I'll kill you dead. Don't you understand? Don't you see we're fighting for the same thing? No, we're not, sweetheart. I'm fighting for revenge and a little freedom. You're just greedy. Quick detail, under the levee. Start digging in placements. Lieutenant, bring the dynamite. Hello, Yancey. How are you looking well? You too, Yancey. And you're what I came for. Afraid I'm not available. Oh, you're available, all right. I guess I can wait. After you. Mr. Derringer. And the gun in the sash. The Indian's knife. Just a minute, Mr. Donovan. I'm in charge now. She's a bear cat, ain't she? Get on that Gatling. And if anything moves on that levee, kill it. Yes, sir. A real bloodthirsty type. Charity. I'm protecting my home and my property. Well, you won't get away with it. Oh, Yancey. I hope you realize that. You're wrong. He can get away with it. Tell that Indian to go through the window, walk where we can see him, and tell the commanding officer that if anyone tries to dynamite that levy, you and the administrator are dead men. And tell him the order came from Rogue Donovan. I told you. She can get away with it. Tell him. You heard what the lady said. Tell Captain Fry. No signs. I just told him to make it fast. What's that, Levy? I'm watching, I'm watching. The only thing I see out there are the bodies you made. Lady Charity, they're evacuating New Orleans now. But tens of thousands will be trapped. Women and babies, the sick, invalids. With absolutely not one prayer of survival. Survival. That's what it is. It's just like rogues trying to survive. Just like you are. Just like I am. It's every man for himself. All right, Lady Charity. From now on, you're a man. 
trophies. Nancy looks like she's smarter than I am. I never would have thought it. I didn't want it to be this way. Why couldn't you leave me alone? Nancy, I think she's going to kill you. I don't understand. Is Mr. Derringer up there? Mr. Colt? Are they all right? Chris, we're checkmated. We can't fire in that house. I'm sorry, Pahu. I don't understand. You mean we're supposed to fire regardless? The battery will load and fire. Lady Charity. What's the use? You're not a lady and there's no charity in you. You've even ceased to be a human being. There's only one experience left for you. For everyone in this room. Death. You can meet it nobly in an infinite act of mercy so that others, even the rogue Donovans might survive. Or you can die as you've lived, disgracefully. Consumed by your own bitterness and greed. Well, Lady Chair. No. Battery out of here and dynamite to Lenny. I can make it. Okay, come on. No, no. Don't, don't move on me. She caught me with that buckshot. There's a big hole in there. She better go, friend, before that river gets in. Why'd you do it, bro? I guess it's like your friend said. Got no place to go but out. Might as well go in style. Bless you, Mr. Donovan. Uh, he, he never gives up, does he? <laughs>
Well, Mr. Colton, I cleaned everything out of the wound, including an old Chicago newspaper. It was quite a flood. You're very kind, Francine. Is there any word from the city? Not yet. Thank you, Obadiah. Now, Mr. Colton? Yes, see. How's his leg, Francine? I think he's going to be all right. It's much better. Pahu made you the crutch. Thank you, Pahu. How's the river? Well, the crest is passed and the river's falling. And the city? Have you heard from the city? No word. Captain Fry. Captain Fry, the city? Mr. Colton, New Orleans will be with us for a long time. At least until the next flood. When it hit, the crest never passed 20 feet. The levee is held and the river is dropping. In fact, the evacuees are streaming back into town. Wonderful. I have an excellent idea. Why don't we join? Bonanza silver mine. She's worth making a trip all the way to Virginia City for? Monsieur, that mine contains more wealth than you've ever dreamt of. Who's this other owner? You let. Your partner. You'll find Bullet very easy to get along with. Nancy, the safety valve's stuck. Excuse me, gentlemen. Virginia City. as rig this town's ever seen. You know what this is, Fitch? No, I don't reckon I do. Well, this here's a real dude, Fitch, a genuine dude. Now, is that a fact? And the Indian? Oh, that's his nurse. 
Pick a bag for him, will you, Fitz? Oh, sure. Well, that's the prettiest suit of clothes I ever did see, dude. Be a shame to get it all dirty. <laughs> Hotel driver. Now, if you're through playing games, let's go have a drink. Now, thank you. I'm not used to such violence. You mustn't mind the boy joking. This is a raw town, and you have to expect a certain amount of horseplay. And besides, you're pretty spectacular for these parts, Mr. Uh... Derringer. Yancey Derringer. Miss... Julia. Where are you from, Mr. Derringer? New Orleans. And you're here on business? That's right. In Virginia City, we mix business with pleasure. Do you play cards, Mr. Derringer? Well, I've been known to. Have you ever played uh, three-card Monty? What? Three-card Monty. In my hand, I have the ten and jack of hearts and the ace of spades. Now, the object of the game is for you to guess which card is the ace of spades. This one? That's very good, Mr. Derringer. Thank you. I think you've played this game before. No, just watched. Seeing that you're no amateur, shall we make it a little more interesting? Say, uh, $100? $100? Fine. You make me doubt my skill, Mr. Derringer. But you know, I still think the hand is quicker than the eye. Shall we say 500? Shall we say 1,000? 1,000? I can see you're a sport, Mr. Derringer. So am I. I bet my diamond ring against your $1,000. Is that all right? Fine. to bet again with you sometime, Miss Julia. See who's best at palming an ace. The wrong way to play it. All right, play off, play off, Miss. Now, this gentleman has provided us with some prime entertainment. And all Miss Julia got was a bit of her own medicine and an empty ring finger. So let's not spoil things with a vulgar brawl. The drinks are on me. Bless me. Nobody ever got the better of Miss Julia and her little tricks as you have, sir. Taking her diamond ring. <laughs> Could I have a look at it, sir? I love beautiful things. I'll give you your thousand dollars for it. That's very kind of you, sir, but uh, no thank you. It's a pity. Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. My name is Jim Ogden. Uh, Big Jim, they call me. Yancey Derringer. From New Orleans. Ah, the Crescent City. Do you have a mining interest? A half interest in the little bonanza. What happened to Henry Duvall? He lost. I see. And what are you planning to do, Mr. Derringer? Well, I thought I'd work the mine to see if it has any value. Right now, I'm looking for my partner, Mr. Bullet. You know him? <laughs> Indeed, I do. Where will I find him? At the top of the stairs. Excuse me, Mr. Ogden. Come in. You have a 
gall coming up here. Get out. I'm sorry. I'm looking for my partner, Mr. Bulet. Partner in what? The little bonanza. Mr. Ogden said I'd find him up here. You won us? Poker. Mr. Derringer, you have been swindled. Again? How do you know? I am Mr. Bulette. And last year, the little bonanza paid off exactly $17.40 before expenses. You know, digging silver's a funny thing. You could be 10 feet away from a million dollars and starve to death. Not you, ma'am. Oh, yes, me, ma'am. I suppose you've heard all those tall stories about me. I've heard you're called rich, celebrated, and uh, queen of Virginia City? Not celebrated, notorious. Not rich, needy. This place is mortgaged to the hilt. Then we do have something in common. The first days of the Comstock were... They were wide open and wonderful. So forgive me if I deal from the bottom to keep up appearances. Well, now, you do do that. Mr. Derringer, you'd better go back where you came from. What's the rush? There are things to do. Like what? Well, I should go out and take a look at the mine, make sure that there isn't something there for you, for me. Partner, you're a fool, and I'm beginning to like you. I like your style, I like your looks, and I like your last name. I might even grow to like your Indian. Can I call you Yancey? Please do. Tell you what. If the little bonanza pays off, I'll level with you. I promise never to deal from the bottom again. Let's not take the oath too soon. We're all weak vessels. I mean it, Yancey. I wonder. Here. Here's my good luck charm. What would you suggest to seal the box? Hmm, that wasn't your first kiss. No. It was the first time I ever gave anyone my good luck charm. A toast to our new partnership. Bulet and Derringer. Ah, uh, Derringer and Bulet. Uh, let's keep it alphabetical. Thank you. Now, in exchange for this character transformation, would you uh, honor me by accepting a little trinket that I won from a tenderfoot? Oh, Yancey, you sidewinder. <laughs> Let's not rush things. He who hesitates dies a bachelor. You never will. Good luck, Yancey. I've already had that. Thank you, Mr. Ogden. Oh, Mr. Derringer, since we're going to be neighbors... We are? Yes, my mind is directly next to yours and Julia Bulet's. If there's anything that I can ever do for I'll you... I'll call him. Well, that's exactly right. Thank you, sir. Stop eating your heart out, little man. We've got work to do. Doesn't look like much, Pahu. Let's take a good look anyway.
Closed up an old mine shaft. It's been a menace to public safety for far too long. Somebody made sure we don't get out that way. We may use this later. Oh, we came looking for silver. Let's keep looking. shaft, tunneled in from his own plane. Wait till Julius sees this. Fresh air. This is the way Ogden gets in. This is the way we get out. Town sure is quiet. Name Derringer? That's right. Who are you? Sheriff Anderson. You saved us the trouble of going after you. What for? For the murder of Julia Bulet. When did it happen? Oh, don't play dumb. She was found strangled this morning, and her last known visitor was you. I'm arresting you for the murder, Derringer. 
Yours? You know it is. You bet it is. You recognize these? Yeah. Yeah. Julia. Yeah. Julia Bulettes. You plant them there, Ogden? Uh, really, Mr. Derringer, I took the precaution of having Judge Harper with me when I searched your room, Mr. Derringer. He and Mr. Greer helped me search the baggage. I'll ask you once more. Did you do it? Nice try, Mr. Derringer. Really nice try. Julia Bullett's mine is worth a fortune. Yeah. And Ogden has been looting it from his own claim. He had to murder her. He tried to murder me because he knew I'd find out and expose him. Shut your lying mouth! I'm putting him in jail for a fair trial. Oh, well, that's no good. Let's hang him now! Yeah, yeah. Let's hang him. You'll leave the prisoner to me. Come on. Let justice be done. Let's hang him. Lynch him. Let's show him they can't kill people here in Virginia. Hold it! Now, what is it, Mr. Derringer? Where'd you get that ring, Ogden? Why, it's mine, of course. How long are we gonna put up with this starling? Let's hang him! I won this ring from Julia Bullett yesterday. A lot of you were here. And I gave it back to her yesterday, and she was wearing it when I left her. Well, Mr. Ogden? Well, I'm afraid you'll have to forgive an old man's vanity. I, I took this ring yesterday when we searched Mr. Derringer's room. That's not true. You had it on before then. You took this ring off of a dead woman's body. No, no, it was Greer. <laughs> Judge, thank you for the advance of the 6000 Not at all. You can have more if you want, Yancey. Well, not this trip. That should buy about the shiniest new boiler on the Mississippi. <laughs> well, I'll keep things going at the mine. Certainly in your debt, sir. Not a bit of it. I figure that a partner should take an interest in his interest. Good luck. And you. A hat. Ed Farina. <laughs> 